The BioMEMS Resource Center brings together the full range of bio, micro, electro, and mechanical systems with skilled staff and collaborators to translate cutting-edge research into life-saving technologies. Our in-house facilities support the complete development cycle from initial research and fabrication through laboratory refinement to the clinical trials which provide data needed for further improvement. A BioMEMS facility that's embedded within a hospital environment, I don't know any other facility that actually does what we do. The major asset of the center is that we're working on a platform technology that has broad application to virtually any disease known to man, as well as any company that's involved with biomedical research or biomedical technology for diagnosis and therapy. At the BioMEMS center, we have about 50 people that are postdoctoral fellows, technicians, and administration that work together. And in addition to this, we have many of our collaborators coming and working at our center. And that makes for a very rich and diverse environment. It's a crucible. It's a crucible that's allowing engineers, scientists, innovators, entrepreneurs, molecular biologists, and clinicians to all come together to solve some really important clinical problems. And it's one of the nice things about having a building that's so integrated. Having the technological experience and having the chance to explore these different disciplines can be an amazing catalyst. There's just this wealth of research, engineering, and scientific expertise, and medical expertise. You always run into bugs, and having the expertise in-house Having everybody under one tent is a very effective, very efficient way to be able to solve these problems quickly. Having that fertile environment, you cannot get that in a startup environment. You cannot get that in corporate America. You get that in an environment such as this because you have the right structure, you have the right equipment facilities, but more importantly, you have the right people. The process may begin with an idea, an observation, or a combination of the two then progress from a CAD CAM design to our clean room for microfabrication. So we start out with what's just a silicon wafer, which is, for our purposes, a very flat surface. On top of the silicon wafer, we spread a very thin layer of this plastic material that's sensitive to UV light. We then expose that material to light through this mask that we've drawn. And the parts that get exposed to light, where we want our channels, harden and then we can dissolve away everything else. So now on our very flat wafer surface, we've got these raised structures that correspond to the channels we want. Of course, that's the opposite of what we want. They're raised instead of being channels. So then we pour this silicone rubber, and it conforms to the inverse of those tiny little microscopic features. So we've got indentations in this silicone rubber. Now we can stick those to a piece of glass. Finally then, we've got these closed channels that we can flow ourselves through to do all of the very interesting manipulations that let us study important medical and biological questions on these individual cells. The clean room's important, but the importance of having it in a biological lab is that it lets us go immediately from making these devices to bringing them right outside the room into the lab where we can start using them right away. So you get the same people who are going in and making these devices who then take them straight to the bench top and use them. And that matters because then when you're using the device, you can look and say, oh, that's not quite working exactly the way I expected it to. And rather than having to make a call back to your supplier and going through a two-week cycle of waiting for the new shipment to come in, you can then sit right down at your computer, change your drawing, go back into the clean room, and we can make new devices. But we also develop microchips that have multiple micro-engineered organ systems on them that could be used for drug screening and toxicology, as well as understanding the biology of organs. The Liver on the Chip project in general is about developing in vitro tools to tell us whether or not a drug that's coming to market is going to be toxic to the liver or to any of the organs. Estimates vary, but anywhere in the range of 60 to 80 percent of drugs are eventually rejected. So we're trying to reduce the amount of time and money put into drugs that in the end are going to be found toxic. The mission of the center is to combine a number of different technologies together to solve basic clinical problems and really to think about 
uh, products that are going to serve a particular clinical need. An example of academic collaboration is the Brain on a Chip project with Martin Grummet at Rutgers, who's an expert in spinal cord injury, and here we want to connect a brain slice to a spinal cord slice and then see if we can come up with a system that can simulate spinal cord injury and then regeneration. If you could develop these systems, living systems, that you could ship and give to people to study, it would basically change a lot of the current investigations that are going on in the biotechnology industry, in the medical device industry, as well as the pharmaceutical industry. But that is just the beginning of the journey. A stroke of genius may have some value, but its development into a marketable product with practical application is key in turning that notable white paper into a medical device that could save lives. At the very core, we are technology developers. We really push the limits of technology. As the technology becomes exciting and we see potential applications, we bring collaborators and they come also and look at the technology and take it from a student to postdoc level to a higher level. So one example of clinical collaboration is the chip for AIDS diagnostic. That chip uh, counts a number of CD4 cells from 10 microliters of blood, which is just a droplet of blood. The chip is now being pursued by a startup company who is going to try the commercial version of the chip in the field in Africa. You know, if you make a technology, you develop a technology that can be used by a non-expert, by a non-PhD, by a technician, a nurse, or a doctor, uh, these technologies have the potential to make a much greater impact. So here's a chip. It's a circulating tumor cell chip, ergo, about three or four years ago. This is proof of concept. Lots of tubes, lots of piping. This is what the chip looks like today and is being realized over at Memorial Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson Cancer Center, and Dana Faber, and with our director of the Cancer Center here at MGH. So there's a lot of work that goes from taking this from here to what's in my hand out here. Completing the path from idea to device is just the first stage of a long upward climb. It's here in the clinic where doctors and nurses will learn to rely on this product or throw it away. At least that was the case until the clinic became the final testing ground in our development routine. The partnership that we've had with Mehmet's team and with the bioengineering team has completely changed that. We now understand what the process is of making these devices. They work for some applications, not for others. You have to adjust them, you have to work with it. And in some ways, it's been a big learning experience for us. People who are in the battlefield uh, are talking to each other, communicating with each other to solve a problem. It's a cyclical process as prototypes return from the clinic to the lab with detailed feedback while at the same time new devices and their applications are being discovered and rediscovered. Inertial focusing was rediscovered in microfluidics at the BioMEMS Resource Center about five years ago. We're developing technologies for clinical diagnostics of infection. Inertial focusing has the ability to process and to detect fungal cells within a matter of hours instead of days, which could be the difference between life and death for a patient. There are multiple initiatives underway at the center which could be in process for years before they reach a level of refinement that justifies widespread distribution to the medical care community. The research that I do on circulating tumor cells focuses on capturing these very rare cells, one in a billion, to have clinicians that identify patients for us on a weekly basis that we can choose from to have directly sent to our lab door is something that no one else has that I know of. It's just starting to ramp up, but the kinds of questions that we can answer is really unprecedented in the field and has really reignited a field that was pretty much um, somnolent, if not dead, before this started. People had given up on circulating tumor cells as something that would never work, and now it's one of the hottest growing, fastest growing fields in oncology. While the sizable staff and facilities of BMRC may be impressive, that is just a small part of the picture. The full scope of contributors and collaborators includes many others that work with us from among the world's top academic, research, and medical institutions, and some of the most advanced companies in the world. And the Resource Center makes this facility available to NIH investigators to try to disseminate the usefulness of these microfluidic devices 
and of this whole technology to advance their own research into new areas. And we teach them how to operate each piece of equipment in this whole complex fabrication process. It's very much a hands-on, one-on-one training. We start with people with a wide variety of backgrounds and we have to bring them in and teach them how to use this highly specialized equipment. You know, we've trained probably a few hundred people at this point how to design, fabricate, and build these devices. So in addition to the clean room, we train people in how to do cell culture. We've got a whole array of microscopy systems. We can look at bright field images, fluorescence, phase contrast, or DIC. Again, this is another learned skill that we have to teach people how to do, but it's absolutely critical when you're looking at some of these medical and biological questions. Having the researchers see what it takes to get an idea that they had or an invention that they had and what it takes to really get it out there, I think is important for them to understand that it's not just a simple, aha, I had an idea and cool, look, it works here and uh, I can publish a paper, but from that to get it to something that's real is a huge chasm, is a huge building block that needs to happen. The benefit of the center to the overall sort of biomedical science community can be seen by the number of collaborations we have, some of which where the collaborator actually jointly works with us to develop something, but much of which is us developing devices that they utilize in their own laboratories. We take the cool technology and we bring innovation team and collaborators uh, to take it to the next level and we have clinical trials uh, every day internally. MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering, Dana Farber and Mass General. The center coordinates about 50 collaborative projects. They are in three main areas. Some of the projects are focused on clinical problems. There are also projects in science where we are addressing more fundamental questions and we have collaborations with other people developing technologies, microfluidic technologies that can be applied to clinical or to science. One industrial collaboration is the Allergy on a Chip project and we hope that ultimately this will be even better than the animal testing and the reason for that is that we can use completely human materials in our device. We have many collaborators since United States we also have many collaborators around the world. With unparalleled capabilities throughout the complete development cycle and our many strong working relationships with accomplished educational and research institutions across the globe, the BioMEMS Resource Center has a proven track record of developing cutting-edge technologies for studying cells and tissues on a chip. Through our training and collaborative efforts, we are spreading our expertise throughout the scientific community. Combined with our in-house dissemination efforts, technologies developed at the BMRC, from rare cell capture to high-speed cell sorting, organs on a chip, and beyond, are ushering in the 21st century of medical breakthroughs.